Elliot Brown has created what they consider the ultimate mission timer watch, the Beachmaster. This watch, which they do have a patent for, allows you to track two time zones while also being able to time events, runs, or anything else you want to time, either via the external bezel or the inner bezel. This is all packed into a 40 millimeter case, which I believe is based on the Bloxworth Heritage Diver and the Canford model. The one I have here is the newest version, which is actually quartz. Yes, Elliot Brown has quite a few versions and colors of this watch, and you can go either automatic for a Salita SW330 or a Ronda quartz movement. Since I only have the quartz in hand, that is the one I'm gonna concentrate on, but if you prefer an automatic, know it is available and be prepared to pay for it as it is well over $2,000. These quartz models, which seem to be only available in this blasted gunmetal finish, start at $720 on the Tropic Fitted Rubber, and the bracelet version tops out at $824. I'm going to talk all about it here in this review, so let's get to it. So this is a Mission Timer GMT, and this actually has a patent as well. Now the patent is for the dial design and the way all these complications are placed on the dial and how they all work in conjunction with each other. I will put all the specifications on the screen, but if you want to, you can read all about this piece on the Elliott Brown website as well, because they perfectly describe all of the functions and how to use them. Furthermore, there is a blog post that talks all about their patent, the development of this model, how long it took, and why they decided to do it. So let's start with the dial. Now you can see that the dial has a center display for the 24 hour or GMT time, an outer track for the inner bezel, which does move in both directions, the large 12, 3, 6, and 9, and the decently sized minute markers. One thing that is missing is the date. Now, while this watch is not strictly a GMT, it is interesting that this is yet another watch with a GMT complication without a date. I'm guessing if you are doing mission critical things and timing multiple events and needing two time zones, you don't need the date. That or they just couldn't find a way to fit it all in there with all the other complications. The GMT hand is split into two, so you can use it to track your second time zone, as well as use it to track your timing on the inner bezel. Now, while this is not the first watch capable of all of these things, it apparently is the first to implement them in this configuration versus, say, subdials in a chronograph. And in the end, it comes down to personal opinion on what you find easier to operate and read. The dial on my example is what Elliot Brown calls Nevo, a signature color, and it's like a deep bluish green color, which I do find attractive against this gunmetal case, though there is a stone colored dial called Ghost, and a blackout dial where everything is black, including the hands and markers as they have black loom. The center area of the dial has a wavy theme, which they say is inspired by the NATO symbol for an amphibious assault. As I said, I believe this case is inspired by the Bloxworth Heritage case. So while it is 40 millimeters, the bezel is 41 millimeters. And it's not what you would call a slim watch at 14 millimeters thick. It's also quite a heavy case. This is a solid chunk of steel and you can feel it. When it comes to the crowns, first let me state that the action on these crowns is superb. The internal bezel or timing crown has a ball bearing system and it does not lock down, but it is a joy to turn. The same goes for the bezel. This is easily the best action I have felt on an Elliott Brown watch. It's easy to grip and rotate, yet it locks into place with no play in either direction. It's just fantastic. I will say though, I do wish the crowns were a little larger or more specifically that they jetted out from the case more. The time setting crown has to really be pushed in to be screwed down, which is fine as it gives really good feedback and you'll know when the watch is screwed down, but doing so I find these crowns a little on the small side and I don't exactly have, you know, overly large hands. And I can only think how hard these crowns would be to use with gloves on, regardless of the extreme knurling. 
the case is what I have come to expect from Elliot Brown. And with this being extremely tool watch orientated, the finish is non-glare with a gunmetal PBD and a lightly sandblasted finish. Now I say gunmetal, but Elliot Brown says it's pale gray PVD. And to my eye, the case looks more gunmetal while the bracelet does seem to be more of a pale gray. Yes, I see a difference in color here. Not sure if that's gonna show up on video, but in person, it does look like the bracelet has a different tone than the case. On the non-crown side of the case is where you access the screw bars to remove the bracelet or strap. Now I have both the bracelet and the fitted Tropic rubber, and no matter which you choose, the lug area is extended. So if you have a smaller wrist, know this will extend that measured lug to lug of 50 millimeters a little bit more. Tools are included in the packaging to remove the screws, and this is such an easy system, and these are not your typical standard screw heads. So while not impossible, you shouldn't have to worry about marring the screw heads if you like to change straps often. The case back is perfectly straight. It's bolted on and compressing the seal and tensioning the movement shock protection system. The NATO wave symbol is represented here again and below is a rectangular bar which is blank. This confused me for a bit and then I thought maybe this area is to get custom engraving but then I took a look at the automatic versions and it turns out this is where they stamped the limited edition number on the autos. Now it makes sense to use the same case back on both the quartz and autos, but it seems a little lazy not to engrave something into the space on the quartz versions. Now, maybe the word mission or maybe timer, maybe patented, I, I don't know, but it is odd that they left it blank. One other thing about the case is that I find the back edges of the lugs to be sharp. You could feel them with your finger, and we're not talking cut you sharp or anything, but there is an edge to them that I feel could have been softened or chamfered better. Note, I do not feel it when it is on my wrist. Speaking of on the wrist, on my seven and a half inch or 19.05 centimeter wrist, both the rubber strap and bracelet fit well, but I do prefer the bracelet. The links are smooth, they have a roundness to them, and of course, with the ratcheting extension clasp, it's easy to get a pretty good fit, and sizing is done via standard screws, and yes, the screwdriver is in the box as well. This is the old style ratchet clasp. It's large, it's somewhat intrusive, as many other companies have been moving to slimmer ones where the mechanism slides under the clasp, but this is all about function here, and it does work well. And when it comes to the loom, well, X1BGW9 and X1C3 Superluminova have been used, and that loom is all over, including the clasp, but I like what Elliot Brown did here. Blue loom is your mission time, and green loom is your regular timekeeping, so you can still keep track of things easily in low light or complete darkness. In my testing, it's not going to last all night, even though it is extremely bright off that initial charge, that surface area isn't there, but you should be able to get a few good hours out of it. Honestly, I could probably talk about this watch a lot more, but as I said, I think Elliot Brown has covered that. I tried to, you know, give you my impressions on this piece on what I think about it in person, how it looks, how it wears, and talk about the functions, but, this watch was built with military and special forces in mind, and this is nothing new for the British base brand. Now, of course, anyone can purchase these, and whether you time critical missions or you use it to time those burgers on the grill, it's a pretty cool piece. Aries Watches has a similar watch, a global mission timer, though it does lack the inner bezel. It is a GMT though with a fully indexed bezel and it does have dual crowns, though theirs is on the opposite side of the case. The Aries is also a couple hundred dollars more expensive and it's only available in an automatic, at least for now. So these quartz versions will save a lot of money if you don't need an automatic. Like all Elliot Brown watches, this watch feels substantial and very well put together, and this feels like it can take a beating no matter what you throw at it, and it's another well-designed piece. The ball bearing system on the internal crown, the solid feeling of the outer bezel and time crown, all of it worked together, and this is just a well-made piece. 
It's odd about the blank area on the case back, and for some reason, there is no stainless non-plated quartz versions. You need to go automatic for those currently. Also, this one is clearly gray gunmetal, but on the other dial colors, it looks very much like a black PBD, but the descriptions say gray PBD. So either the photos are way off, or the description is, so if you were looking at either of those, you may want to confirm with Elliot Brown first, as it may not be what you want. If you want to see more, I will have a written review linked below. And like I said, head over to EB's website to check out all the info on this new model, the process behind it, the design, and the patent process. As I have talked about before, it takes me longer to put these videos together like this, and that means less frequent uploads. The YouTube algorithm doesn't like that, so please help us out. If you're watching this, if you enjoyed it, please like the video, comment down below what your thoughts, and please share the video. Please subscribe and turn on notifications as well. This is Don Evans from Watch Report. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.